Hey everyone, welcome back to the Waterstones vlog. It is Will here. In fact, the whole team are here because we offered ourselves up as book doctors last week. You sent in your requests, we are here to answer them. And I'm going to start off with Zuzka. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, and you mentioned a book called Things That Are by Amy Leach um, and asked for similar recommendations. Quite an extraordinary book, that Amy Leach book. Uh, and so I have to find some extraordinary recommendations for you. The first of which is this. This is Thunder and Lightning by Lauren Redness. Now this is actually a kind of piece of graphic non-fiction. It is all about the natural world, uh, but as you'll be able to see from these pictures, she's also an artist, and it's just an incredible book that tells you things about the natural world that you did not know, um, all wonderfully illustrated. It's just a beautiful thing. And then more of a recommendation of an author, really, rather than a particular book, but Rebecca Solnit is a writer who writes about the world, about humans, about us, and. I have never ever read anything by her that wasn't completely fascinating and brilliant. She always opens your eyes and makes you look at things in a completely different way. She is super smart and anytime I see an article by her in a newspaper I just am very happy because she's always got something really interesting to say. Trying to find her books can be quite hard because they're very hard to categorise so trying to find them in the shop can sometimes be a bit tricky but she's written a lot of brilliant stuff so just check her out. That is my recommendation. The first one is from a user who commented that they're suffering seriously from a Donna Tart withdrawal. So the first prescription that I'm going to give for someone who is a big fan of John Tart is Daphne du Maurier. Now, Daphne du Maurier actually has quite a lot of books that I think the Donna Tart fan would enjoy, but I'm going to recommend Rebecca in particular. Rebecca follows the story of a young woman who sort of hastily marries a man who she's just met and she moves in with him very quickly. But she has haunted this young woman from the moment she arrives in this new home by the memory of her husband's dead wife, Rebecca. You know, there just seems to be bits of her everywhere. There's stories, her old belongings. It's like she's being haunted and the atmosphere created by this mood, by this type of writing is really, really addictive. I know I found that when I was reading it anyway and you'll kind of be hurtling towards the end to find out what happened, what's the story with Rebecca, what is going on. So I recommend that for the same sort of dark, sinister, sort of harrowing prose. The second book is by John Fells and it's The Collector. Now The Collector uh, is told from the point of view of a kind of very intellectual, very high-minded, socially isolated young man. He collects moths, which a lot of people think is quite strange. And one day, he sees a young woman who he's quite infatuated with, kind of in love with from afar, and he decides to collect her. So it's a, it's a great book, it's a great premise. It's got that same sort of um, very highbrow, very descriptive detail. And again, it's got quite a, you know, bit of shocking detail, you're working up to this big crime, what's gonna happen, what's gonna happen, it keeps you in suspense. So I think that fans of Donna Tart, again, will really like The Collector. Hi everyone, it's Rhiannon here. I'm in a slightly strange location because I'm on holiday this week, but here are my solutions for the book doctor problem. So firstly, there's Inessa Maria who wants to get into sci-fi. Um, I was in a very similar situation about a year ago and I found that Becky Chambers' books opened up the entire world of sci-fi for me, so I'd really recommend starting with A Long Way to a Small and Angry Planet by Becky Chambers and then the other two in her series because they are breathtaking and they are quite intense sci-fi but written in a way that feels very very accessible. If you're looking for something a little bit more classic sci-fi like shooting aliens type thing, The Illumini Files by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff are incredible. They're formatted in a sort of found file way and they're really interesting to read but all about space, it's like a group of scavengers on the run from a big scary corporation and I think those two are gonna, gonna set you on the path to sci-fi. Hi it's Naomi, I'm here to play book doctor for you for a few minutes. Um, I had a question from Hero Wolf, they were looking for a murder mystery series of books. Um, so I was taking murder mystery to mean maybe a sort of more classic murder mystery style so I think the best place to start is Agatha Christie, um, classics are classics for a reason whether you try to pick up Poirot or Miss Marple or read some of her short stories or even just one of her standalone novels you're in for a real treat, um, she's absolutely fantastic at what she does um, the next thing that came to mind was Georges Simenon's um, May Green novels, uh, sorry for the pronunciation there, 
Um, they are short and sweet. They are wonderful in the sort of detective genre. It's also worth shouting out the British Library Crime Classics. That's hard to say fast. Um, they are mainly reissues from the early 20th century. They're all different authors, but they follow that classic crime murder mystery uh, format for the most part. For more kind of like modern series that might fall under the murder mystery banner, um, I would say the Bartan trilogy by Dolores Dondo. Um, I've, I've spoken about The Invisible Guardian, the first one in that series, um, on the vlog before, and I would thoroughly recommend uh, the rest of the series to you as well. And another series I wanted to mention that I think people are totally sleeping on at the moment is David Young's Karen Muller series. Um, it's about a young female sort of detective who ends up um, sort of working with the Stasi in post-war Germany. Um, it, yeah, they're absolutely fantastic. I, I think these books deserve more love. Um, they're incredibly interesting and very well plotted, very well plotted. Moving on now to Sugasov. Hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, you listed quite a lot of books that you loved, and so I've tried to find some that are sort of connected to the books that you had liked in the past. You mentioned uh, The Hearts of Visible Furies by John Boyne. Somebody who was a good friend of John Boyne, and in fact, I believe they used to work in Waterstones together many years ago, um, is Anne Griffin. And this is her debut novel. It's called When All Is Said. Uh, and in fact, it has a lovely quote from John Boyne on the back. An extraordinary novel, a poetic writer, and a story that moved me to tears. Need you hear any more? It's about a man raising five toasts to five people in his life um, and is just beautifully written, and so I'd really recommend that. Um, you also mentioned some novels which looked at the experience of uh, black characters in various parts of history, and so I wanted to mention one that I've already mentioned on the vlog um, A Different Drummer by William Melvin Kelly. This is one of these kind of rediscovered classics. Um, I found it really eye opening and brilliant. It's uh, an audacious piece of writing. And so that was a definite recommend. And then you seem to have a taste for the you know, literary end of fiction. And so I'm going to have to mention, of course, the book that is already my favourite of 2019. It's Lanny by Max Porter. Pick it up. This hardback is a gorgeous thing. The typesetting is incredible. It's all about language. It's also about family. It moved me to tears. That is all I have to say on the matter. Just read the book. There you go. There's my three recommendations for you. Hope you like them. I saw a comment from someone just asking for books for beginners. The Catcher in the Rye and Franny and Zoe by J.D. Salinger. The Catcher in the Rye is a story told from the first person about a young man called Holden Caulfield and for the most part it's just very intense character study of Holden walking around uh, the city kind of uh, his interior monologue what he's thinking about and it's very you know teenage boy a lot of his worries are very you know laughable if you're an adult I guess but that's what makes it so um I don't know, relatable, because when you are young, uh, silly things do weigh you down and do get to you. And that's why it's such a great book and why people are still reading it. And being such a great fan of J.D. Salinger, I just wanted to recommend two books um, because he's great. And Franny and Zoe is one of my personal favourite books that he's written. It's much shorter. It's actually separated into two short sections, almost like two short stories, one told from Franny's perspective and one from Zoe's and their siblings, a brother and a sister. And they're kind of uh, comparing their uh, own versions of each other, if you know what I mean. Like it's, it's very interesting to see one from the other's perspective. Margaret Atwood, with The Handmaid's Tale doing so well in the television adaptation there's been a huge renewed interest in her i'm going to recommend the handmaid's tale but then if maybe you've already seen that you know the, the television series is everywhere i'm also going to recommend the panopliad panopliad i think that's how you pronounce it uh it's uh, about penelope in the iliad and it's kind of the events of the same classic tale retold from her point of view. And then last of all, sorry that I only have a proof cover of this, uh, I'm gonna recommend Normal People by Sally Rooney. So many countless people have told me that Sally Rooney helped them to start reading. Her books have helped them to kind of dive into a world that they might have been apprehensive or felt like, you know, they didn't belong in this kind of, uh, world of literary readers who read all this you know new fiction and that kind of thing so uh this is what i would encourage people to read and i hope you all enjoy it bye next we have chi ming who kind of sounds like me in that they read everything <laughs> and need some recommendations they said they liked middle grade books um if you like middle grade books 
My favourite one right now is Nevermore by Jessica Townsend. Full of magic and wonder and mystery. It's a really good one. Cheeming also mentioned that they liked the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. I hope I got that title right. I can never say it properly. I would actually recommend Skylark's War by Hilary McKay. It is a middle grade book, but it's also set in World War One. No magic just about this family following their lives through World War I. Um, it made me cry, it's absolutely incredible. And if you're just looking for something fun, contemporary, just a standard enjoyable fiction book, um, Attachments by Rainbow Rowell is my go-to recommendation when I'm not recommending kids' books. Um, it's kind of a You've Got Mail-esque rom-com set in uh, 1999 um, and it's kind of in the format of emails but also prose um, and it's just oh, it just makes you feel like you're reading a hug well i hope any of those helped and uh, see you next time the next question i got was from mina d they are looking for some historical fiction recommends um, so historical fiction, uh, one of my favourites, Sarah Waters, um, she's got plenty in her back catalogue across a, a sort of a variety of time periods as well. Uh, some of my favourites are Fingersmith, The Little Stranger, uh, so many modern authors are inspired by her and I would honestly check out her back catalogue, um, that's a great place to start. Um, something again I talked about on the, on the vlog before is the Poldark series, there are 12 books, they are set at the end of the 1700s. Um, the character work is spectacular. I love them. I will never stop recommending them. That's where I am with that. Just do it. Just just commit to the 12 books. Um, and then we've got uh, Hilary Mantel, very much a giant of the genre. Um, so Wolf Hall and Bring Up the Bodies uh, have both won the Booker Prize. Um, I don't think that's a feat that's been uh, done before, but do correct me if I am wrong. Um, yeah, and the third book in that series, we are apparently going to see that in 2019. A lot of people have been waiting for it. Um, it's up there with one of the questions that I'm asked most frequently at the bookshop, with, along with when is the next George R.R. Martin out. Um, I don't know that either, I'm afraid to say. <laughs> um, yeah, so Hilary Mantel, um, do check her out. The amount of detail in those books is phenomenal. It's, it's a great piece of writing. It's a fantastic project, what more can I say? So I hope that helps people, and uh, thank you for listening to me. Bye-bye. And finally, to finish off, uh, Sissy Reads, you um, mentioned a sort of taste for novels that were set in Soviet-era Russia, so I've tried to pick up some, some Russian books that I think you should read. Whether they're Soviet-era or not might not be exactly 100% correct, but I've got three great books for you. The first of these is an absolute classic. It's probably likely that you've read this, but for anybody who hasn't, you really must. The Master of Margarita by Mikhail Bulgakov is an absolutely incredible book. Um, which will, may lead you on to reading more Bulgakov, but this is just absolutely brilliant. And, and if you, it's one of those books I think you genuinely have to read. <laughs> there are lots of different editions. This is the vintage edition, which I rather like because it's got this lovely cover. Um, moving on now to another book. This is a debut novel, but published some time ago by Olga Grushin, and the book is called The Dream Life of Sukhanov. And this book came into my head as soon as I saw your request, but I'm a terrible person for memory. And so I know I loved this book, but I actually can't remember huge amounts of detail about it. But I do know that it's absolutely suffused with Russian culture. And I really enjoyed the journey of the character because I know that it's about somebody having to reevaluate their whole life. Pick it up, have a look at the blurb, see if it sort of tickles your fancy. But I really do, I remember absolutely loving reading this book and then going on to read more of Grushin's writing after this. So that's The Dream Life of Sukhanov by Olga Grushin. And now I'm going to give you a recommendation, which is actually a book which is yet to be published. So this is The Secrets We Kept. This is a proof that I've been sent by Lara Prescott. And this looks at the story surrounding the publication of Dr. Zhivago by Boris Pasternak. It involves the CIA and the FBI and the Russian Secret Service. It's an extraordinary story. And I think this book is going to be absolutely massive this year. So it's one to look out for. The Secrets We Kept by Lara Prescott. There you go. Three recommendations. I hope you've enjoyed all of these recommendations, whether you sent them in personally or not. Uh, we do love recommending books. That's why this video, uh, video is a little bit longer than the rest. Uh, but we hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, we'll be back next week with uh, more standard vlogs. But until then, take care.